Good morning everybody. Crypto Father here is back. It's a cool Monday morning and I just dropped off my daughter at school. We were a little bit late as uh, Sunday events have kept us up a bit and we slept in. Uh, the days have become a bit cooler. I turned on the heater in the house and as a result um, we had a hard time sleeping in and we were sleeping as toasty as marshmallows. I'm presently out for a walk with my dog and this is what I wanted to talk to you about. Uh, I'll just tell you a little bit about Korea's recent fascination with dogs. As until recently, dogs were considered no more than food. Yes, Korea was a place where people used to eat dogs. Not so much anymore, although it does happen occasionally. I'm gonna go through the park here, so there's gonna be a bunch of people probably. I'll show you maybe what uh, um, the park employees do in the morning. Every morning, uh, people group up in front of the park and they exercise. Maybe good, probably good. It's good to exercise. People in Asia, I think in general, tend to be a bit more on average. The average Korean tends to be a lot more health conscious. People, people exercise a lot more. But what people do not do with their pets is control them. So dogs, dog owners, there's, the number of dog owners has grown drastically here. And people, um, it's almost like, you know, this dog ownership, this new acquired liking for pets has, has been dropped onto people suddenly. And people didn't have enough time to, um, to get used to it. So I'm just passing by uh, the warehouse here, uh, where every morning the, the garden crew gets together. They set up their equipment, a bunch of women uh, prepare and they go out and um, do things in the park. They clean up, pick up the mess. There's always somebody picking up the mess. So uh, garbage is another issue in Korea, but it's not at the same time. The issue is that people occasionally, actually quite a lot, just throw garbage around expecting somebody else to come pick it up. So back to the dogs. Uh, over the past five years, uh, the number of dog owners has, has skyrocketed and uh, has, it has almost become an epidemic. You can purchase dogs in uh, small sizes almost anywhere. Uh, here are the ladies. They're that's after the exercises. They've done the exercising and now they're gonna uh, head out in their wagons and their vans to, to get out. They always try to talk to my dog every morning I walk by. They say hello. There's one lady who talks to, to the dog in, in, uh, in English, not realizing that I do speak Korean, which is kind of funny. <laughs> So, every morning I go past here, this is the first time that we actually had some interaction and I've been walking past here for months simply because every time I pass here uh, the women are either quite busy getting onto the trucks to get to work or they're exercising. So, uh, yeah, uh, okay, so we're in the park here. This is the biggest park by my house and surprisingly enough, there are no people with dogs. Uh, I think I just saw a person over there. But uh, on average, there are quite a few dogs here, usually in the mornings. 
and uh, people take their pets for strolls. And the number, so as I was saying, number of dogs has skyrocketed here. There's so many um, pet shops catering to, you know, miniature poodles, um, which is probably due to the size of the country. I don't know. Uh, uh, take a look at the size of the country and it'll give you an idea of the size of the majority of the dogs present in the country. Uh, people, it's a, it's a lot easier to keep a small dog in the house um, than a big dog. It's a lot less work, it's a lot more fun. People perceive it as, uh, you know, see dogs in Korea as pets, uh, as, as toys rather than pets. Which is, I believe, uh, a problem. Uh, even back home in Canada, you know, uh, people are accused of treating their pets like, like humans. And uh, it's true to some extent, they spoil them, but nothing compared to what people are like here with their pets. And I guess it happens when you have small dogs on your arms, you're more likely to pick them up and hold them and cradle them and so forth. So um, I've seen people walk around here with dogs in strollers. Yeah, literally little dog strollers. I'm not sure if they're made for that very purpose or if people just, you know, convert um, uh, granny strollers, kind of walker, walker type arrangement with a basket in front and turn those into little dog strollers where the dog sits in front of the basket and the person pushes it around. In any case, it does happen on a regular basis. The number of times I've seen it is plenty enough <laughs> for me to shake my head every time I see it. Um, another problem with uh, owning dogs here, dog owners, is that they, uh, uh, they let their dogs, you know, whiz everywhere which I don't necessarily agree. Anybody who has a dog should have limits. I understand it's a pet or animal and you know they have their urges and they don't understand things the same way humans do. But um, for example, stairs. Stairs are off limits. There's plenty of trees and enough grass for dogs to urinate on. Stairs are not a place where dogs should be whizzing. Um, and people here seem to just be oblivious to that. They don't care. They just let their dogs do their business wherever they please. Um, as a side note, this is Korea has a lot of these these playgrounds in in parks, and this is a water water playground. Meaning that in summer this turns into water fountain and water splashes everywhere. And so oftentimes, in addition to the whiz on the stairs, you will also see people just not picking up the dogs uh, number two. And you will see little curdles, like rabbit-sized curdles here and there, which is annoying. It bothers me. Uh, not really, well, it, it, people's personality in that case bothers me. Because again, it's almost like, you know, people are very likely to throw garbage around expecting somebody else to come around and pick it up. And it's almost like they expect the same thing to happen to their dogs, uh, uh, leftovers. And that's just not cool. Uh, anyway, I guess it's good for the economy because it provides jobs for people who, who can walk around and clean parks and pick up dog poops after their owners. But I mean, that's, you know, that's just a funny way of looking at it. So... Right, so the talk on dog consumption in Korea, um, it, while about 10, maybe even five years ago, you were still able to see um, restaurants uh, called Boshin Tang, which actually means healthy soup uh, or something of that sort. I'm not exactly sure on the meaning of Boshin, but um, it referred to restaurants, they were restaurants serving dog dishes or dishes made of dogs. Um, there are particular kinds of dogs, they're large, very lovable looking creatures. Um, and these restaurants were sprinkled all over cities. Um, but about five years ago, I think these, these restaurants began to disappear. And by now, um, you'd be very hard pressed to find 
any restaurant catering to dog eating lovers or lovers of dog food. Wait, no. <laughs> Maybe there are some people who enjoy eating dog food. Um, so these days you'll be hard pressed to find restaurants serving dog for food. Um, the women that were calling my dog earlier, they were going la la la, or one of them was. So I explained in Korean, in my very limited and broken Korean. I explained that, um, that the dog doesn't understand la la la, and I showed her to go, which works better, but it's a problem for the woman, because she can't do that. <laughs> she, she just used the word to describe the sound that I made, which is sounding like a kiss, so she just said pop pop which means um, kiss kiss. So it's kind of like us calling dogs kiss kiss, kiss kiss. That's what she was doing. Funny, that's why they had a good laugh at it. Um, so presently, while, uh, while in the past, dogs were larger size in Korea um, and consumables, presently dogs, most dogs come in teacup sizes and uh, people, cradle them and they and they spoil them almost like children um, and I think it's good um, I think uh, you know moving away from this dog eating culture uh, allowed was a push by the government I think in order to to open South Korea more to tourism because um, I think that was one of the thorns that was sticking in the side of the country um, you know any any travelers, any foreigners coming into Korea, they knew that, um, you know, Korea was renowned for, for that one thing. And I guess Koreans did not want to be labeled as the dog-eating nation. Rightly so. Uh, I guess the next thing to go is going to be the whales, which is still a large business here and still um, problematic. But uh, that's one of the things that probably going to take a while to disappear. Um, Go, go. <laughs> Where are your friends? They're all alone today on this walk. All your puppy friends. Go, go. Okay, our time in the park is up. Um, I have to head back and get my son out of bed. I'm pretty sure he's still sleeping. Uh, <laughs> lucky guy. But uh, he's got to get up and got to get him to kindergarten and then get ready for classes and work. I guess I'm lucky in that way. Uh, my mornings are uh, sort of free. So if I, if I were able to just now free up my evenings and go to sleep early, I would be waking up every morning as a, you know, a happy camper. Today probably one of the reasons why, why uh, we were late. We were very, very late is because I went to bed late and I don't remember if I turned off the alarm or not. I may have. It's really fuzzy as my head is right now. I think I need coffee. <sighs> All right, that's it for this intake of Korea. I'm really hoping to do a segment on uh, temples and free lunches. I wasn't able to do it this weekend but I hope to do it next weekend and take you up to one of the temples in the neighborhood here. And uh, maybe with, with Coco, the dog, and my two little babies. And we'll show you around uh, in one of the little temples as well as the type of food that's served for lunch in temples in Korea on a Saturday pre-noon during Saturday lunch. Crypto father out. See you in the next one. Stay cool.